Welcome back. It's another edition of Walter Football Odd Shopper. The two combining here for a very powerful week. Well, it was all Walt last week. We didn't do anything here. We were just providing the platform for Walt to go four and one, six and one. When you add the leans, the honorable mentions that don't make the cutting floor right there. We'll tell you all about WalterFootball.com coming up. Walt's got five more plays, but have yourself a week, sir. Yeah, it was an awesome week. Uh, you know, very exciting to go four and one, six and one, including the leans. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, let's let's keep going with another strong week. All right, so we remind you all out there: thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't here to the Odd Shopper channel. We'll tell you all about the amazing. It's not one or two things. There's about 15 different things you should be taking advantage of at WalterFootball.com. But my friend, five picks from you. We are eagerly anticipating another strong week. Let us begin in Minnesota. Yeah, so uh, I have a lot of enemies in Minnesota, and we're going to have more because uh, I keep going against the Vikings every single week, and I'm going to keep doing it as long as they're overpriced. Uh, I think the Jets plus three are the right side here. Uh, the Vikings are – they get so lucky every week, and it's it's something different all the time. Like week three, they were down 10 against the Lions in the fourth quarter, and DeAndre Swift and Amon Ross and Brown get hurt. Uh, week four in London, they were playing against the Saints who didn't have Alvin Kamara. They had a, they had a missed field goal at the end to win the game. Uh, against the Dolphins – third-string quarterback. They were outgained by 224 yards. Uh, Washington was up seven in the fourth quarter, and Heineke throws that ugly floater interception, and and the Vikings score. Uh, now, against the Patriots on Thanksgiving, uh, the Patriots outgained them in total yards and, and yards per play, but the Vikings won because the Patriots allowed 14 points on special teams. Uh, the Vikings could easily be six and five right now, and if they were, they would not be three-point favorites over a Jets team that suddenly has a good quarterback, or maybe not a good quarterback, but not a terrible quarterback uh, in Mike White. White, look good against Chicago. And I, I know this is a step up in competition, uh, but the Vikings don't have that good of a defense. So I, I think Mike White should be able to play pretty well. And then on the other side, uh, you're going to have uh, Kirk Cousins, who really struggles with pressure against a top five pressure team. And he may not have Christian Darasaw again, his left tackle. So uh, I think the Jets win this one outright and getting plus three is, is, is seems like a great line. I love the focus on Mike White, not at the very least being a drop off by any means and, and that factoring. Are you sure those enemies didn't come from the Nick Foles run back in the Eagles knocking off Minnesota? Yeah, it, it could be. I was uh, I was actually in Minnesota and uh, the people there were nice, but maybe they were just plotting uh, my demise then behind my back. Let's move to Atlanta here. Big one for the Falcons. Yeah, so I've been against Minnesota every week, but I've been on Pittsburgh every week. Uh, the Steelers are three and one with TJ Watt this year. Uh, their only loss was uh, to the Bengals, who I, I think are an elite team uh, or, or close to it. Uh, they were and they were down four with five minutes to go, so they they may have won that game. Uh, the Steelers, I, I mention it uh, every week here. They're a top six pass defense with TJ Watt. They're a thirtieth against the pass without him. Uh, that's how much he means to them. And he's going against uh, an Atlanta pass rush or Atlanta pass protection that's not very good. Um, Atlanta has not played uh, that many good teams this year. And they, they they were very lucky to start the year covering the spread. They're 6-0 against the spread covering the year. They, they had some like fluky results. Like week two, they're down 28-3 to against the Rams. And they they came back because the Rams took their foot off the gas. Like st Results like that. Since that 6-0 start against the spread, they're 0-4-2 against the spread. Um, they're 30th in net EPA. Uh, the only teams worse than them are the Rams and the Texans. And I, I still think people don't recognize how bad uh, of a team Atlanta is. Like, they just have nothing going for them at all. Uh, the defense stinks. They can't get to the quarterback. They're the worst pressure rate in the NFL. They can't pass protect. Uh, the running game's okay. But uh, against the Steelers, I don't think they're going to run that well. So I, I think Pittsburgh wins this one. And I think the Steelers should be favored by three at least. Yeah, it's amazing to see the Falcons as a one-point home dog on the Westgate lines here against the Steelers team that, yes, tout and, and pat yourself on the back all you can, Walt, because you were ahead of this one, and you called it right before they turned things around when Watt came back. Yeah, Watt is, is such a big factor for them. Uh, you saw what they did week one against the Bengals. They turned Joe Burrow over five times, and they get they gets hurt, and they can't stop the pass. But they've also played some tough teams. Uh, before the Saints game, uh, they played uh, the Bengals, the Patriots, uh, Browns are the one exception. They played the Jets, Bills, Buccaneers, Dolphins, and Eagles. Like that's such a tough slate. And now they get easier teams. Like they had the Colts Monday night. Now they have uh, the Falcons. I, I think this is a great opportunity to bet them. You mentioned an easier team. I don't know if it gets any easier than going up against the Houston Texans. And on top of that, there's a lot of drama, as everybody knows, with this game and the Browns-Texans. 
Yeah, big drama has to be Kyle Allen versus Davis Mills, right? That's that's what everyone's talking about. Um, yeah, so I, I was well telling done. you, I was telling you before we recorded. Uh, I, I was kind of on Tuesday. I was like, I like this game a little bit. I'm not going to bet it. And then uh, to, the next day, I was like, I, I like this game. I'm going to bet it moderately. Now, now I love this game. Uh, so this is Houston Super Bowl, and they're going to want to beat Deshaun Watson after what happened. Uh, no matter what, they're going to sell out. They're, they're going to bring the kitchen sink uh, to beat him. I, I know they've been blown out the past two weeks against Washington and then Miami, but those are two really bad matchups for them. And it, because uh, they want to run the ball nonstop with Damian Pierce and Washington, Miami are two of the best run defenses in the NFL. The Browns are the worst run defense in the NFL. So I think Pierce is going to have a huge bounce back performance. And I think that's going to make things easier for whichever quarterback they decide to go with. I think it's Kyle Allen right now. And if you look at the spread, the spread doesn't make any sense to me because uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Washington was minus three and a half uh, in Houston. Now Cleveland's minus seven. So you're telling me the Browns are three and a half points better than a, a solid Washington team. Uh, now you might, might say, okay, they get Deshaun Watson back, but Watson hasn't played in two years. I, I don't know how rusty he's going to be. I, I think it's going to be some, it's like there's going to take some time uh, for him to, to get back on track. Uh, the only time we saw him play was in the preseason. He looked terrible, and I think he played like two or three drives. Uh, now I, I don't want to like lean on that completely, uh, but you know, not playing for two years I think is a big deal. So uh, with, with this being such an emotional game for Houston, I, I think they at least could keep this close. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if they won outright. So if you have the Browns left in a survivor pool or something, like I would not take them here. I, I think yeah, they're not a good team. Uh, they're three weeks removed, I think, or two weeks removed uh, from losing. Um, by 22 against the Dolphins. So, uh, you know, they could easily lose this game, I think. Love that play. Definitely not going to be, I think, the popular one, but those are usually the ones that win, the non-popular ones that you have the information and the data to support it there. We're going to move on our final two plays, but let's remind the world, Walt, about WalterFootball.com. It's really your one-stop shop. We say the five-tool site for everything across the board. You're getting betting analysis. You're getting DFS. You're getting fantasy. You're getting mock drafts ahead of time. You guys are crushing mock drafts when it comes to betting futures as well. So, Anything and everything in this game, you have us covered. Yeah, uh, 2023 NFL mock drafts. We had two of them and a 2024 NFL mock draft. Uh, and as you said, we have draft props uh, ahead of time. So like in April, we'll, we'll post them uh, a couple weeks before. And we, we get uh, we get some great inside information from Charlie Campbell, who's our senior NFL draft analyst. Uh, like he'll, he'll text me uh, like Team X is taking player Y. And like, OK, let me go bet that. So like <laughs> we'll, we'll have that on the site as soon as we get the info. Plus, picks against the spread, updates, uh, fantasy rankings. Uh, we grade every trade and signing. So, yeah, you can get everything at WalterFootball.com. All right, let's go to Las Vegas here. And this is another home dog scenario. Yeah, so I I, I think the Chargers are, are overrated as well. Uh, if you look at uh, the results, uh, they haven't won a game by more than three since week four, and that was against Houston. So the, the, it's weird that they're favored in Las Vegas. And maybe you could make the case uh, for that to be uh, – make the case for this line a couple weeks ago when the when the Raiders are two and seven they're coming off that loss against the Colts but they've been playing a lot better recently and I, I think they um I think they win this game um the Chargers have some a, a lot of players on the injury report they have Derwin James Corey Lindsley Mike Williams Trey Pipkins these guys are all on the injury report they may not play um if, if they stay there uh I, I really like the Raiders um and you know, the Chargers played the Dolphins on Sunday night. Uh, they're coming off a win at the last second uh, last week. Um, and uh, you may make the case, okay, the Raiders are coming off two overtime games in a row. Uh, I actually looked it up, and it's okay to bet the situation. Since the 2010 uh, lockout, uh, teams coming off double overtime games are 9-8 and eight against the spread. So that that's should not be an issue. Um, so I, I think this is a mispriced spread. I think people think the Raiders are still one of the worst teams in the NFL. You can make the case they have the worst, one of the worst defenses in the NFL, but their offense is great. And the Chargers, outside of a like, couple of great fantasy players like Eckler and, and Herbert and Keenan Allen, like, what did they have going for them? Their offensive line is in shambles. They have multiple injuries there. Uh, they can't stop the run. They can't stop the pass. They can't get to the quarterback without Joey Bosa. Like This is a, this Charger team is not very good. Uh, and I think they're only favored in Las Vegas because of the disparity between the records. And as I said, the, the Chargers don't win games by more than three. So I think this is going to be a tight one. And I think the Raiders take it. Yeah, we talk a lot about Lamar Jackson, that Ravens team blowing leads. How about the Chargers, right? Justin yeah. Herbert, this team, and also Brandon Staley. Like, he's a really difficult coach to trust that he's not going to screw up as well. So as much as people may not like the idea, Walt, of putting their money on the Raiders, I think you're on to something where the Chargers are just too untrustworthy at this point. 
Yeah, I talked about um, the Chargers Cardinals game last week uh, on the site, and I kind of mentioned it as like the Spider Man meme game because both yep. teams are both teams are the same. Like they have explosive playmakers, they have bad defenses, and they have coaches who blow games. Like it was the same thing, and it was so funny because Arizona had a whole had a lead throughout the fourth quarter and they blew it. So I, I feel like if the Chargers had that lead, uh, they would have blown it, and Arizona would have won by one. All right, we're going to go back to the cutting floor, honorable mention or two, but we have one more official play, and that's in Dallas. Yeah, uh, feels like everyone's on Dallas. Uh, I'm on the Colts. I think this line's too high, and I, wow. I'm I, I thought I thought that you know when I saw the advance spread. Uh, so the Westgate publishes uh, spreads a week in advance. Um, it was minus nine and a half, and I thought I was looking at it, and I was like, okay, I made it minus six and a half uh, because the Colts have a, a really good defense. They're fourth in defensive EPA. Um, and I, I think they're underrated, despite what we saw Monday night, uh, because I, I like the Steelers more. So um, now the line is 11 and a half. So it's moved like five points. This is five points off my number. Uh, so I, I feel like I just have to take the Colts. And, you know, it, it kind of uh, jives with uh, the results this year. Um, outside of week two, when the Colts are missing like half the roster against Jacksonville, every game they've played with Matt Ryan on their center, they, they've lost by single digits or one. Uh, so like they, they beat the Raiders on the road. They almost beat the Eagles. They lost by one. Uh, they're 20 yards away from beating the Steelers Monday night. So that would have looked better if they had gotten there. They lost to the Titans, to, to the Titans twice uh, by single digits. Uh, they beat the Chiefs. This team plays close games because they have a great defense and they could run the ball. Uh, Dallas is really bad against the run. Uh, I think we saw it uh, against Minnesota early on when Dalvin Cook had like a bunch of long runs, uh, but they couldn't keep running with Cook because their defense just got dismantled and the Cowboys threw all over them. I, I don't know if the Cowboys are going to be focused here because they're coming off a couple of big wins against Minnesota and then the Giants of Thanksgiving. Uh, like, are they really going to have the Colts on the radar? I, I just don't see them having an A plus performance here. So I, I like the line value, and I, you know, the Colts with their great defense and running game, I think they're going to keep this close and lose by like six or seven as you usually do. All right, let's run back real quick, Walt, your picks, your five picks, including where we just ended with the Colts Cowboys game. And then we'll hit what you have as far as anything that didn't make the final cut. Yeah, so the five are uh, Jets plus three, Steelers minus one, uh, Texans plus seven, Raiders plus one and a half, and the Colts plus 11 and a half. Uh, the two honorable mentions, um, they're both from the NFC North. I have the Lions uh, plus one. Uh, I like the, like what I feel about the Vikings, I feel the opposite about the Lions. Like they've had such a tough schedule this year. I think they're underrated. And I think people are finally ca catching on after, you know, they almost beat the Bills on Thanksgiving. And I, I don't I, I quite understand why their home dogs gives, gives me some pause. Uh, then I looked at the injury report. They had Panay Sewell and Evan Brown didn't practice on Wednesday. Uh, if they're both in, I like the Lions. Now, if they're both out, I have no interest in this game. So it's kind of an injury thing. Uh, the other game is the Packers minus four and a half. Uh, this has to do with Justin Fields. If Justin Fields is out, you're going to see this line skyrocket to like six or seven, and we're going to get great value in the contest. So the Packers almost have to be on the card at that point. Yeah, and real quick, it's you definitely want Justin Fields in versus not, but I don't feel like you're totally screwed in, on that number if he doesn't play, right? Oh no, I, I like I like Green Bay minus four well, and a half. Right, it, right, right. I'm sorry. In, in that sense, like you're the opposite of it. That that's what I meant. Right, I apologize. Right. It, it came yeah. out wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think you have to look at the practice report. So he was limited Wednesday. So right. if he's limited full, full, um, I'm not going to have any interest because he might be healthy. But if he's limited, 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 uh, I think he's not going to be able to run as much. So I, I would still have some interest in the Packers. But the slide's not going to move. It's still going to be four and a half, maybe four. Uh, but if he's out and uh, Trevor Simeon has to start again, or maybe who knows, Nathan Peterman, um, this line's going to go to six and a half or seven in real life. But because the contest lines are static, it's still four and a half. So you're going to get great value with the Packers in minus four and a half. And I, I like to go against terrible teams playing their backup quarterbacks. All right. One more time. WalterFootball.com is the site. So we appreciate you all hanging here. If you want on the way out, hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed to the Odd Shopper YouTube channel. But we want you to hang at WalterFootball.com. And, and again, you guys are just doing everything. You want to pimp the mock draft. Pimp whatever you want because you're crushing it on the way out, man. Yeah, like I said, we have everything to do with the NFL. So if you're interested in the draft, we have mock drafts. If you like fantasy, we have fantasy rankings, DFS content. If you like uh, gambling, we have picks against the spread, not only in NFL. And we have also have college football. We were 4-1 uh, as well in college football this past weekend. Uh, we're going to have NBA picks when the NFL season's over. I just can't juggle like so many things, uh, especially with the sun now. Uh, so uh, we're going to have that as well. And as I said before, uh, we're going to have uh, draft props uh, a couple of days before the draft. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. Six and one when you had the honorable mentions in last week. We'll see you all again this week. Let's cash some tickets.
Sounds good.